This use update is brought to you by. So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. This is the Barbados Today Afternoon Update for Friday, February 27, 2015. I'm Carol Williams. Good afternoon. Patient revenue at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital was down by more than a quarter last year. That revelation by Chief Executive Officer Dexter James during a lecture organized by the University of the West Indies Open Campus on the topic, Is Free Health Care Sustainable? The CEO blames the decline on several issues. We generate a gross of no more than about $7.5 million a year. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in patient revenues. Over the last year, we've seen a decline by about 25 to 30 percent in the revenues for various reasons. With the economic realities facing most patients now, they opt into the public care <coughs> as opposed to private care. Some have um, other reasons relating to our inability to sustain our supply chain on an on a, you know, on ongoing basis. But yeah, we, we raise about $7.5 million a year uh, from, from revenues. James also says that some critical questions need to be asked if Barbados is to move to a more sustainable healthcare model. We need to review the whole question of how do we mobilize the resources, pool the resources, and then now disseminate it to a number of providers. Do we continue to hold fast that the only providers are the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the polyclinics? When we look at the entire health system and we see that there is more than enough capacity in the health system to take care of the resident needs of the population and beyond, is it not now the time for us to begin to, to engage the private sector in, in our offering? Those are uh, uh, policy issues that, that must, be, must be discussed. The egg shortage that has been affecting the country could last for another three months. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, says while steps are being taken to fix the problem, it will take time. What we have is a situation where um, once things get back to normal, we should be able to satisfy the local poultry market as we are accustomed to do. I think what we saw really was just um, a situation where the, 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 because of the difficulty in sourcing hatching eggs, it affected then the placements on farms. And that is just a temporary anomaly which will be rectified, within, as I said by me. The island has been experiencing a shortage of eggs since late last year, leading to the importation of approximately 960 cases in December. The problem reportedly originated on the international market. The head of the Human Resource Management Association is calling for more training of employers, saying many of them are violating the law without realizing it. President Glenda Jilks tells Barbados today that too many employers, especially those in small companies, are unaware of the legislation governing the workplace and only learn of the violations when matters are taken to the Labour Board. Uh, once, it, once the act was passed in 2013, I think most organizations try to comply with the bigger ones. I think the smaller ones are struggling a bit because not every small organization has an HR person. And so they have struggled and they've lagged a bit in terms of implementing the legislation. And they may find that they may have an grievance which will go to the labor department and then they're only made aware of the new labor legislation at that time. I think we need to do a little bit more in terms of educating, having sessions where people can come out and actually hear about the new safety and health at work legislation and how, how they should apply it to their organizations. And that's an ongoing process. Workers at Scotia Bank Black Rock are keeping their jobs despite the planned closure of the branch later this year. The bank's Caribbean East Managing Director David Noel gave the assurance to the staff yesterday during a meeting in which he informed them that the closure would take effect on June 12. Noel says it's due to the global restructuring exercise that was announced last November. He says the decision was not taken lightly given that significant impact the consolidation or closure of branches could have on customers, colleagues and communities. There's regional and international news after this short break.
it's time for AgriFest again. Come and enjoy the National Agricultural Exhibition on February 27th to March 1st at the historic Queen's Park. Over 300 exhibits on show, highlighting the theme, Inclusive Agriculture, Strengthening Linkages, Creating Synergies. AgroFest 2015, the biggest agricultural exhibition in the Caribbean. Don't miss it. In Trinidad and Tobago, more than 600 teachers are being investigated in the wake of complaints ranging from sexual misconduct to abuse of sick leave. This includes a physics teacher who has been accused of habitual absenteeism and failing to perform his duties. There have been complaints that the teacher has been collecting a $10,000 a month salary from the education ministry while managing a multi-million dollar company where he's listed as the proprietor. Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisin confirmed yesterday that he had received a letter of complaint against the male educator and that the matter was before the Teaching Service Commission. Internationally, Germany's parliament has voted to extend financial aid to Greece by another four months. While the vote passed easily, some MPs expressed doubts about the deal. The extension must now be ratified by Eurozone members. It comes after police and protesters clashed during anti-government demonstrations in Athens yesterday. More in this BBC report. Well, a few more MPs uh, voted no, which wasn't expected. Uh, yesterday, in a run-up to the vote, 22 MPs signalled that they would vote no. In the event, more than 30 actually did. Uh, but what was surprising was not the result, the it was more the ferocity of the debate. German Parliament debates are often quite sedate and civilised affairs. This one was pretty ferocious. Um, there were lots of catcalls, there was lots of jeering, uh, there was quite a lot of laughing at opponents. And that's because this extension of the bailout, it might be unpopular in Greece, but it's also pretty unpopular here in Germany. Uh, two thirds of German voters say they actually don't want the extension of the bailout. And only about 20% of Germans say they do. And that brings us to the end of our Barbados Today afternoon update. You can join us again this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV as well as Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Carol Williams. Continue to enjoy your day. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here.